Welcome back. Now we're going to talk about the respiratory zone, um, the, the respiratory bronchioles. We started with the um, terminal bronchioles. Now we're looking at the respiratory bronchioles, and then we'll talk about the alveoli. So respiratory bronchioles divide into smaller and smaller um, structures that lead to our alveolar ducts, and the alveolar ducts then lead into our alveoli. So alveoli are tiny little like sacs where gas exchange occurs. Why does this do this every time? Hello, there we go. All right, so the respiratory, um, res the epithelium of the respiratory bronchioles is simple cuboidal epithelium. As we move into the, the alveoli, we get thinner and so the majority is simple squamous epithelium but there are some um, simple cuboidal cells and there are also some macrophages associated with the um, alveoli. So each lung contains about 300 to 400 million alveoli um, and so each alveoli is then in what we call a group of sacs um, which are openings and so there are pores that allow materials to move in and out and then the alveoli are surrounded externally by pulmonary capillaries. So what are the three major types of cells that are associated with our alveoli? We have type 1 and type 2 alveolar cells, and then we have macrophages. Type 1 alveolar cells are the most common, and these are simple squamous epithelium where gas exchange occurs. Type 2 alveolar cells, also known as septal cells, are simple cuboidal in shape, and they produce pulmonary surfactant. And then we have the alveolar macrophages, that are there to um, protect the lungs from any potential pathogens. So the respiratory membrane itself is super thin. It's composed of the simple squamous epithelium of the alveoli, simple squamous epithelium of the capillary, and then one basement membrane in between, so that basement membrane is composed of areolar connective tissue. So oxygen then moves from higher to lower concentrations down a gradient. So um, in general, it moves against or it goes, it moves down its um, pressure gradient, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, from higher to lower concentration, and so it's going to move into our blood, which has lower oxygen levels, and then carbon dioxide moves out of our blood and into our lungs, which has um, lower carbon dioxide levels. So now let's look at our lungs. The lungs then are paired organs. They are super lightweight because they're filled with a bunch of sacs or openings um, where gas exchange occurs. The lungs are one of our lightest organs. They actually, if you were to stick um, healthy lungs in water, they would float. So all the air that's in them. Um, the right lung, I will mention, and the left lung differ in that the right lung has three lobes, the left lung has two lobes. The left lung also is slightly smaller. It has that cardiac notch in it where the heart sits because the heart sits a little closer to the left side than the right side. It's not right in the very middle. It sits closer onto that left side of the chest. Um, and you can see how the bronchi branch off into the different lobes up here. You can see that, which is kind of cool. So um, the lungs themselves have a special membrane surrounding them called the pleural membrane. Um, pleural membrane functions to decrease friction. So we don't want to have friction um, 
when we breathe, there's a lot of stuff in that thoracic cavity. And so we don't want um, our lungs to get damaged when they hit the heart or when they hit the um, sternum or the rib cage. So we have to protect that. And so that pleural membrane helps to protect and reduce friction. So a disorder associated with a pleural membrane is called pleurisy. Pleurisy is inflammation of the pleural membrane. Um, it can surround one or both of your lungs. And it's typically um, associated with breathing in certain um, chemicals or it can accompany a, a um, sickness. So if you have an infection of some sort, it can accompany that. So that's where this picture came from. You can kind of see where the this lung here is red showing pleurisy because you have an inflammation of this lining. Um, and when that happens, it's going to be more painful to breathe because as this lung expands, it's going to rub on this inflamed lining. A disorder associated with our lungs. Um, so I guess I don't know if you'd call this a disorder or a bad habit. Um, smoking. But smoking can cause different disorders. So we'll talk about it in that way. Smoking um, causes changes in our respiratory tract and um, in our lungs themselves. And so some of these changes cause problems like that um, chronic bronchitis. So as we smoke, we breathe in that um, toxic chemical. It actually causes damage to the epithelium. And so the ciliated cells that are in your um, bronchi are going to get damaged and they're no longer going to be able to move as effectively. So you kill off those cilia, the mucus just sits there and that's going to cause you to have a smoker's cough since you can't move that mucus as effectively. Um, and this is just showing what a black lung or a smoker's lung might look like at the end um, or does look like if you never stop smoking and this is healthy. But there are other disorders that are associated with smoking as well. Oh, I'm sorry. So um, I'm going to talk about a few of these. Um, we'll talk about cancer, emphysema, um, genetic changes which lead to cancer, atherosclerosis. Um, if you are pregnant and you're smoking, your baby is likely going to have a lower birth weight. Um, inability to get oxygen to your systems, which can then lead to other problems like um, obesity and um, potential depression. Um, I did talk about bronchitis already. So let's look at lung cancer. This is a figure, and you can go to that figure if you'd like to. I have the link right on it. Um, lung cancer is a very aggressive form of cancer that oftentimes metastasizes to other organs, um, but it originates in respiratory epithelium. Um, lung cancer is often um, also associated with other disorders. So, I mean, you have lung cancer, but you also may have emphysema or other problems um, if you are a smoker. And most lung cancers are associated with smoking. Not all, but most are. In fact, here you can see the different types of lung cancers. So there is adenocarcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, small cell carcinoma, and non-small cell carcinoma, which is another word for large cell carcinoma. Um, <clears throat> and then you have, you know, other forms. So when we look here, the amount of each of these disorders that's associated with non-smoking, um, very small here, um, pretty much non-existent in small cell carcinoma, in large cell carcinoma, small amount. Um, adenocarcinoma is the only one that has a, a nice chunk that is for a non-smoker. So the majority of cancer 
lung cancers are associated with smoking. So one of the best things you can do to protect you from lung cancer is to not smoke. Um, that being said, I also know how hard it is to not smoke. Um, my husband was a smoker for since he was, I don't know, nine years old, eight or nine years old is when he started. I mean, he's one of the, those kids that started young and just got addicted and just never stopped. And he just recently quit smoking. Um, and it's been wonderful, but it was hard and he had to go through a lot and I give him a lot of credit. And so, you know, anybody who is trying to quit smoking, the best thing we can do is support them and not harp on them. So I show you this, I tell you how important it is, but I'm never going to yell at you for smoking because that's not my job. Eesh, what's wrong? No, no. That's not what I wanted. You can go to their website. But that's not what I wanted. There we go. Like, I was like, what? All right, emphysema. So this is a serious disorder. It's a form of COPD, as is chronic bronchitis. Um, so this is associated with um, changes to the lung structure as well as to the um, alveolar structure. So um, let me quickly mention the lung. So lung tissue itself has elastic um, connective tissue associated with it. And um, when we, as we age, the elasticity of our lungs decreases. And so um, when we breathe, when we take a deep breath in, the lungs expand. But if there's not elastic, then they're not going to constrict back to where they're supposed to do. And that causes problems because then it takes, it's harder to breathe. The other problem, and I'll explain that in a couple minutes. The other problem is um, the alveoli sacs get damaged. And so here's a healthy alveolar sac. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of little. Um, pouches here within that big sack, right? Here we have one, two, three pouches. And so you're increasing the size of the pouch, but that decreases the surface area. So anytime you, um, the, the reason multicellular organisms exist is because we became multicellular so that we could get larger. So, um, or I should say the reason large organisms exist is because we became multicellular. One single cell has too little surface area for, for acceptable nutrient exchange. And that's what's happening here is we have too little nutrient exchange available. So you can't get as much air or oxygen to your blood. And so both of these are, are um, what cause the symptoms of emphysema. So they can't get good gas exchange and they can't expire the carbon dioxide effectively. And in many cases, emphysema is also caused by smoking. But that doesn't mean emphysema is only caused by smoking. So you can be a non-smoker and you can still have emphysema. So I'm going to stop here and we'll get into pulmonary ventilation in our next video. All right. Bye.